Hello, everyone. Who here would like to hear some good news? Anyone here? Nah, I'd much rather be wallowing some misery and hear some more bad news. Any? Okay, good. There's no one. Because I would hope to disappoint those people. Because I'm going to tell you some good news that you're not going to hear if you watch the mainstream news. Because there are, there is no good news on that show, or on any of those shows. Okay, so many of you already know who I am. I'm Ed Spina. I'm a self-proclaimed author, speaker, and mystic. And when I say mystic, mysticism is a spiritual discipline aimed at direct communion with God or the ultimate reality. And so the most important thing to a mystic is not merely having intellectual knowledge, but is to have an experience of the divine, of this. So later in the program today, we're going to have a short meditation where you'll get a taste of what it's like to be tapped into that, that energy. <clears throat> so before then, I'll tell you the reasons why I think that we're in the most exciting times in our history and that things are better than they've been in decades, maybe hundreds of years. So, but before I do that, I would like to at least tell you a little bit about myself so that you understand my perspective, where I'm coming from. I'm not one of these airy fairy, oh, light a candle, everything will be fine. No, I was, I'm a scientist, I was a mathematician, I wrote software. I went to business school at the University of Chicago, which is a, one of the finest business schools. And after that, I went to work in the venture capital business. All very high, intellectually challenging uh, positions. But the venture capital business also wasn't fast paced enough for me. I decided I needed to be an entrepreneur. And while I was a stressed out entrepreneur, I rented a video at Blockbuster that promised to relieve all my stress. And the video also promised to teach me about my past lives. And so I watched the video and I didn't have any interest in anything spiritual at the time and I didn't study any history. But when I watched this video, I went into an altered state and I recounted or remembered a past life in significant detail. Now I didn't automatically accept that this was in fact a past life, but as a scientist I said, let's check this out. And I checked it out and I had access to all sorts of information that I would have no way of knowing. So I knew then that my education was incomplete, that even though I went to some very fine schools and studied sciences, and no one ever taught me about mysticism, spirituality, karma, reincarnation, all these spiritual subjects. So I began studying this in earnest. Now the earnestness with which I studied these subjects drew the attention of my first mentor, who I call Sophie, after the Greek goddess of wisdom. That's not a real name but you can't find Sophie even if you wanted to. Uh, you can't find her, you can't sign up for a webinar, you can't call her, you can't contact her, she has to find you. And the only reason she went to find me is because of that earnestness that I wanted to understand the secrets of the universe. So she took me under her wing, and in a few short weeks, she opened me up to a whole new world that I didn't know existed, and within a few months, most of my contact with her was telepathic. And it sounds incredible for someone who would be steeped in science, but this is, the, this is the real science. This is how the world actually works. And when she got me to this level, she disappeared. With no forwarding address, phone, office, home, anything. I couldn't find her. And worst of all, I couldn't even connect with her in my meditations anymore because she was here to teach me a valuable lesson that once you get to a certain level, then you're on your own, and the teacher's only role is to get you so where you connect with your own higher self, and then their job is over. And so as valuable as she was and as disappointed as I was, that same lesson is what I try to impart to anyone else that listens or follows my work. So after that, I studied lots of other things, especially energy, energy healing, and I met another mentor who had a near-death experience. He came back. He had way more energy than the average person, any, most anyone I've come across. So he pumped my energy up and made it possible for me to do the things that I'm able to do much more easily than I can as a more traditional energy healer. So that was back around 2002. And I continued working in the, in the regular mundane world. And then around 2006, I began healing people publicly. And that's what I spend most of my time doing now, is clearing people out so that they can have the same kind of experience I had, where you're connected with your higher self, 
and you have access to information and wisdom that you wouldn't be able to access through your just your pure intellectual uh, mind. So I began uh, healing people, and I've really began healing people in earnest just in the last few years. I would do it sporadically, uh, first for families and friends, and then I would do it occasionally. Then I was selling my CDs, and so I would give away a free clearing with a CD. But then I realized there was more and more of a need for people to have clearings to be able to access uh, that small, still voice within. So first let me explain a little bit about your esoteric anatomy so you understand what it is when I say I'm clearing people out, what I'm actually doing. Every spiritual tradition knows that you're more than just your body. People talk about a soul. Every religion say, oh, his soul or her soul. Well, more specifically, you have an emotional body, a mental body, spiritual bodies of increasingly higher vibration. And at the apex of your individuated consciousness is your I am presence. That's your gateway to the, the all that is, the oneness that mystics are all striving to tap into. And in between that I am presence and your uh, mind and body is your higher self. So the way that your I am presence and your higher self communicates with your mind and body is through your energy centers. In the Eastern schools, you have the chakras, which people are familiar with, the seven chakras which, ride, which lay along your spine. In the Western mystical experience, you have the energy centers, which are the actual glands or organs that animate your body. And they're correlated, the chakras, with the uh, actual glands. For example, the throat chakra and the thyroid gland are, are one and the same. But some, there are more energy centers in the Western school, and I prefer to use the Western because it's more specific. So I began with my product energy center clearing in the process that I was doing to clear out those energy centers because it's obvious that if you want to com communicate with your I am presence, the best way to do that is to make sure your energy centers are clear so the signal comes in unimpeded. So that's what I do. In addition, these energy bodies that I mentioned, your emotional body, mental bodies, and these spiritual bodies are filling up with, with other emotions and thoughts and that whatever you're focusing on. So many times people are filled with these emotions which are not even their own that need to be cleared out and filled with thoughts that are not even their own that need to be cleared out. So when you get rid of all this debris, then you again, you're not being distracted and you can connect with that I am presence, that higher self. Now in the course of doing my traditional energy clearing, as traditional as energy clearing can be, one client came to me who, as I was at, at the very end of the clearings, once the, one of the last things I do is I take people to a higher place. Take them, when all the, the obstacles are removed, I take them to a higher place. And in this particular case, as I was taking her higher and higher and higher, I noticed this luminous field above her, which I was sensing. When I'm doing these clearings, for the most part, they're via telephone, and I have my eyes closed. I'm just waving my hands and moving things around and feeling things and, and getting rid of them. So this particular client happened to be clairvoyant, which is a big help. And I said, do you see what's above you? Do you get this? She says, yes, yes. I said, like, what is it? And she paused and just said, self. I said, awesome. That's your higher self. Let's bring her in. So we brought her in. And once you bring in a person's higher self, it opens up a whole new level of clearing because the higher self knows exactly what to get rid of in you better than I would ever know and has access to more energy, higher energy. So I did this with her. And then subsequent to that, I said, I have to systematize this so I can do this with everyone that comes in. And so after a few months of a little bit of experimentation, I got down to where I can bring in a person's higher self all the time. Uh, without any problem. <clears throat> and as I, I do this, well, the reason you would want this to, to have access to your higher self, there's a couple benefits of this. The main benefit is that when you have that inner connection with your own higher self, you're less affected by the external world. I mentioned this on the panel yesterday. You don't care what other people think because you know directly, you have the direct experience of knowing these things. You're not required for any approval. And the, the negativity that's out in the world, the more you're connected with your higher self, the less it affects you, and the more you affect the world. 
which is our goal here. When you can connect to that higher self and bring that energy down, you're, this is how you bring heaven to earth. So you would think, okay, now I have this process down. I'm going to bring in people's higher self. It should be straightforward. We should be able to do this relatively easily. And this is what almost all good people would want, to be able to help others to access their higher self, because when you're all connected with your higher self, you're going to make the world better. You're going to make my experience of the world better. I don't have to be the only one that can do this. It's better if everyone can do this, because you'll all be making the world a better place. But as you probably figured out, not everyone wants the world to be connected with their higher self, to be enlightened. The faction known as the Cabal, that used to be known more as the Illuminati, which I hate that term, because Illuminati literally means the illuminated ones, and these are not the illuminated ones that are trying to help humanity, like the great avatars that came before us. They're the ones that have learned some of these mystical uh, laws, but they use them for their own selfish reasons. So the people on Earth are doing everything in their power to prevent you from connecting with your higher self and bringing this wisdom down to Earth. And you can figure it out logically, if you were one of these evil people, what would you do? You try to pollute the person at every level of your existence, in the physical level. They poison you, feed you GMO foods, chemtrail you, vaccinate you, fill you with poison, food with no substance, you know, all these things, which is what they do. And the mental level, they try to do one thing, which is their primary method of keeping you down, and that is to instill fear in you. Now, you're probably familiar with the left brain versus right brain way of thinking. The left brain are the accountants and engineers. They think logically. And the right brain people are the creative artists who you know, create art. <laughs> so what happens, though, when you go into fear is you automatically, the ideal thing to do as a mystic would be to have both in sync. Your, your logical and emotional are both in perfect sync. And that's the straightest way to the higher, higher worlds, higher states of consciousness. But what happens when you're in fear is you automatically go to whichever your dominant hemisphere is. If you're an accountant, you become more left-brained, and you, have, you lose the possibility of being creative. If you're the artist, you may still be creative, but your, your logic goes out the window. So by keeping you in fear, it keeps you at a lower state of consciousness. And then you can understand why all the programming on TV, as the joke is, that's why they call it programming. It's to keep you in fear. Why every, every fifth movie that is produced is a horror movie, it's to keep you in fear. So you want to avoid, well, well we, want, we have to get rid of that fear. In addition, one of the other key emotions that keeps people down is sadness, sadness and grief. And when you look around at the world, just what happened here a few weeks ago right in Las Vegas, there's a, plenty of things to keep you sad and they engineer these things specifically to try to keep you sad. <clears throat> then at the mental level, they're gonna try to make you angry. Ang anger is a, a mental construct, and if they can keep you angry, that's another thing. They're, all these obstacles are in the way to prevent you from getting to your higher self. So your objective is to get past all these obstacles to, like a, the analogy would be the jungle canopy, where is all this dense shade but if you can break through the canopy and connect with your higher self, you're the one that can bring down the sun and you know, hit heaven on earth down to earth. So that's your reason. You want to get past that. So that, that would be, if, if we were only dealing with this, our world, and didn't have any influence from any of the higher worlds, that would be all we'd have to do, get rid of these negative emotions, negative thoughts, and we'd be able to connect with our higher self relatively easily. But that's not how the world is. In yesterday's panel, we had a huge discussion about disclosure and whether there are ETs among us and that, and to people that do the kind of work I do, it's not a question anymore. Of course we have higher entity, higher level uh, beings that help us and also ones that hinder us. And the difference between the two can be simplified into service to others, service to self. The service to others are the, what we were taught by Jesus, Buddha, and all the great avatars. The service to self are the, follower, are the ones that are influencing the cabal, the ones that want to keep themselves at the top of the food chain so that you don't get to 
usurp their position. <clears throat> so there's a great book, the, or a series of books, The Law of One Material, or The Raw Material, The Law of One Series, uh, that was channeled by Carla Ruckert, that goes into extreme detail as to service to others, service to self, and talks about uh, the whole evolution of life. The, the whole reason you're here on Earth is to evolve spiritually. And literally, starting from uh, first density, minerals, to second density, plants, animals, third density, humans, where we are now, and we're moving up the food chain uh, now. Uh, and this process has been going on for millions of years, and there are certain times when the process happens faster than in other times. And so we're in one of those times right now where things are happening much more quickly than they did in the past. And that's why another reason why it's become easier than ever before for you to connect with your higher self and bring that energy down. So one of the other obstacles that I now have to, or that I, I've been having to deal with, I've been having to deal with it for years, but only recently, only in the last year and a half did I come out and explain this, is that these same entities that are service to self exist on these higher worlds, and these are the ones that are dictating policy to the cabal. So it just keeps going up the food chain. Just like the, the positive ETs are helping us to evolve and, and raise the level of consciousness of all of humanity, they're trying to suppress it, and they're helping their own kind out. So one of the things that I have to do in helping the average person, well, no one's average that comes to me for a clearing, you're all you're all special. <laughs> but the, <clears throat> what I have to do is get rid of these negative entities. So the two major obstacles I have are getting rid of these negative entities and getting rid of the sadness that just from living on Earth you automatically pick up. And getting rid of these entities, uh, as I said, I was doing this for, for years, but I didn't tell people about this because I didn't want you to have another thing to worry about. There's enough to worry about in the world as it is, so I didn't talk about it. But now I'm talking about it, and the only reason I am is because there's fewer and fewer of these entities available to torment you. And what used to be, what well, they used to be prevalent and would annoy you and, and distract you, depending on which gland or organ they would go into, they would have a different effect on you. For example, when I'm going through a person's body, I start with their uh, brain. And very often there'll be an entity uh, trying to influence the pineal or pituitary glands in your brain because these are the master glands that help dictate a lot of what's going on uh, throughout your, the rest of your glands. But what happens is if these entities will hide out like in your thalamus, which is another part of your brain, trying to avoid, uh, when I send energy, I send it to the pineal, pituitary, and all the different glands. So they're trying to avoid that. They'll hide out in the thalamus. And what I discovered is that when these entities are in the thalamus, this is going to lead people to uh, afflictions like ADD, ADHD, and you have a harder time concentrating because these entities are in there messing with your brain. So I can go in there, I take those away. Another place where they hide out is in the amygdala, which is another gland in your brain, which is when there, there's an entity there, you will have this primordial fear and anxiety with no, no obvious reason why you would have it. So they hide out there, so I'm taking them out of there. So depending on where in your body, your throat, they're trying to prevent you from sharing your wisdom and, and knowledge with the world. Your heart, you know, they're trying to keep you sad uh, even more so. So I'm going through a person's energy centers and I'm clearing out all these different entities. And I was doing this, and as I said, there used to be these negative entities that would, would go into each of these glands and there's fewer and fewer of those available now to, to bug you. And even these low-level ones, because humanity and everyone has moved up, they're not as onerous as they were in the past. But there also are these, what I call the mercenary entities, which are tougher, and rather than just running away or being easily able to pull off because I send in the energy to the person, they can withstand higher and higher levels of the positive energy. One of the things I do is after I clear out the... the energy body, mostly on the astral plane, I take a person to a higher place, and that's when I bring in their higher self. Normally, when you bring in the person's higher self, that would be enough to chase away any of these other entities. Uh, 
that they can't withstand that higher energy. But now the mercenary ones, these, this is like the last, the last uh, gasp efforts of the cabal and the service to self-faction to, to uh, hold humanity back. They're, so there's some tough entities that have to be gotten rid of, which is what I do daily. I spend most of my, well, from Monday through Friday, from nine to six, people call me and I, I'm clearing them out uh, you know, all day long. So I have a perspective that you as individuals not doing this wouldn't necessarily have. So anyway, we got rid of the, the easy entities that are almost all gone on the planet and in the, in the astral realm. The mercenary ones are still around, but there's fewer and fewer of them. But as I'm combating these negative entities, uh, they are innovating just the same way that I'm innovating, trying to figure out how to defeat them. They're figuring out ways to persevere. And I, I mentioned yesterday on the panel, there, I had been in contact at one point with the, with the negative faction of the cabal, people near the top of the food chain in their thing, and they told me, it's now five years ago, they have access to all sorts of advanced technology like looking glass technology where they can actually see the future and they can see different timelines. And they admitted to me five years ago that there's no timeline where they can win. I said, okay, well now that you know there's no timeline where you win, why don't you back off and let's have a nice smooth transition to a nice world where everyone is uplifted. And they just don't want to do that. They're one, more and more of them, especially the higher entities, are, are willing to concede and uh, give up, basically. But the cabal that's on Earth, for the most part, they're not. Some are, some will turn state's evidence, but for the most part, they're still fighting for their survival, even though they have no, there's no future for them. So, so along the way, these negative entities, uh, one of the things that they innovated, when I first would go through, I would go through all your energy centers, and that would usually be enough to clear you out. Then they realize, wait, oh, hey, we can't hide in any of these energy centers. We have to hide, find another place in the body for them to hide so that we can, you know, they can fool me and I can't find them. So that was why they would start in the, going to the thalamus, for example. Then they got powerful enough where they didn't have to be in any one gland. They could move around from gland to gland or for all over the body or not even be in the body and come and go. So that was another wrinkle where you had to go to a higher, it was harder to get rid of them. Then they came up with an innovative way where they could hide themselves, cloak themselves. First, they could only cloak uh, negative uh, artificial intelligence entities. Like you, some of you may have heard of the term black goo. Black goo is real uh, goo that's in some of the sacred sites around the world. That's uh, it can be programmed and manipulated to do bad things for humanity. And they have artificial intelligence like uh, nanobots that they use both a physical and etheric to uh, hinder humanity's efforts to go to higher states of consciousness. So the, the etheric nanobots was the next innovation that they came up with, which uh, we started clearing that out as well. Then they came up with a way to cloak the nanobots so that a normal clearing, you wouldn't see them. So then I learned from trial and error that if you command these entities to appear, then they materialize, they materialize on the astral plane, which you have to see with your inner vision. So it's just like on Star Trek, when you, I command any entities on, on Donna to appear, they, and then they're there, then you can get rid of them. So that was, another, that was another innovation that they came up with. Now they have an innovation where the actual, and the, the AI entities were never as bad as the regular, uh, I don't want to say physical, but the live entities. Um, but they were annoying. They would just keep you a little off balance always. So, that, so we got rid of those. Then they came up with a way to cloak themselves, the other entities. So, but the same technique applies. You command them to appear, and then they show up, and then you get rid of them. Then they came up with another innovation where they, it, they seemed to mimic uh, nature. But people with Lyme disease, one of the reasons why it's such a hard disease to eradicate is this, the actual disease is able to form this biofilm around the, the negativity so that the antibiotics or whatever you're trying to kill that with can't get to it. 
So these negative entities mimic that on the astral realm, and so they made these egg-like shells around them that you can't sense that they're there. So when they did that, I had to innovate again, and it came up with a, a, a meat grinder or a blender that actually would crush the eggs, and then once you crush the eggs, then you could feel the entities, and then you get rid of them again. So those are, for the most part, eliminated now. We also figured out working with some of my protégés that we did it for the the Earth as a whole, and, and there are other people that do the kind of stuff like that I do as well, and they're also uh, contributing to this eradication of these negative entities. So now, for the most part, there's no more eggs. Uh, the only ones left are these tough mercenary ones that can hang on. As you go to higher and higher levels, they're like hanging on for dear life, and if you go high enough, then then they're just they start shaking, they reveal themselves, and you pull them off and get rid of them. So the only thing left now, they have a, a very small handful, I only see it sporadically, of these negative entities where when you take them to a very, very high place, I, now I have to take people to a much higher place than in the past. Uh, when they get to a high enough place, then they finally appear and you get rid of them. So every innovation that they've come up with to try to tor torment humanity and hold it back, the light forces have been able to come up with a solution to it to make it possible to win. So now, why am I so optimistic about the future of our planet and the world is because one of the fundamental principles of, of mysticism of all spiritual thought is that what happens on the higher manifests on the lower. And what was happening on the lower was, in the past, influenced heavily by all these negative entities that were feeding the cabal and people like them negativity, trying to induce fear anger and hatred in the, in the good people to keep you at a lower level of consciousness. Well, all those entities that were contributing, that were helping the cabal, are, are mostly gone. So what happens on the higher is going to manifest on the lower, and I'm telling you that what I do as a normal course of business daily is clear those planes out, and they're virtually clear now. There's still some left, and so these false flag activities you see on our planet are the last gasp efforts of the cabal to try to keep you in fear and just not give up till the very last minute. Now there have been a number of things that have happened on the planet that are also indicative of how they are losing their power. One of the first things was the Brexit vote where the UK opted to, out of the European Union. This was not something that the cabal wanted. They tried to put a spin on it and say, oh, it's like it was a plan, we, we, want, we knew this was going to happen. But it's not. They're used to dictating what happens in, in these major events because they control the media as well as the, the central banks, the basic banking system. And the, most of the top politicians are puppets of these of the cabal, the earthly cabal, who are then puppets of the non-physical entities above them. So what was I? Yeah, okay, Brexit was the first of, of those events. Uh, last year, we had a second one, when Donald Trump got elected president. Now, there are people here that are under, understand the conspiracy theory, understand that about the cabal, and they understand that Trump is not one of them. A lot of spiritual people don't understand this. I mean, they want, well, he's not a nice person, he's coarse, or he's, he's crude or he says you know, mean things, or he's, he's temperamental. You know, he's got flaws, of course he's got flaws, like all humans have flaws. But if I were to ask anyone here, I have a job for you. It's gonna pay pretty well if you choose to take the salary, but every single person you've ever associated with is gonna be investigated, every single thing you may have done for your entire life is gonna be investigated, and every single thing you do to try to help the, the country and the world indirectly is going to be twisted, and you're going to be made to look like an idiot. Your words are going to be twisted. You're going to have every major network is going to cut and paste every speech you do so that it's a misrepresentation of what you actually said or did. And they're going to send uh, witches and other hex people to hex you and put spells on you and everything else. Anyone want that job? No one in their right mind would want that job. So we're very fortunate that we found someone who was willing to take that job. 
He's he's not. And well, you you can't. But most leaders are not. I mean, true true leaders, similar like the mystic that he's only concerned with his own or her own uh, inner guidance. Uh, Trump is he's not a mystic. He's not a spiritual guru or spiritual master. That he's a someone who understands <clears throat> that. Uh, the country is going in the wrong direction, and he was close enough to see some of how what was wrong with it, but until he became president, he had no idea how bad things were. So he is not with the cabal. This was a major blow to the cabal to have Trump be elected president. Well, there's, there's also different things that happen with Trump. I, I know someone who's a personal, was with him uh, during Christmas of last year after he was inaugurated. He spent time with him alone at Mar-a-Lago, where he lives. And one of the things he told me is that he's a completely different person than he was when he was a real estate mogul. He's talking all about, you know, how can we help America and how, to, how can we do these good things, which in the past was not on his radar. So he is being uh, guided in some ways by higher beings and by people on earth that understand what's what's going on to do the things that he promised to do in his uh, in, well and his during his campaign so he's another example well he, I mean he's his own mind and he's you can see he's not he, with the charm of him and the and Yeah, right. The, 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 yeah, the, the press was so enraged that Trump's speaking directly to the people through his tweets and through the alternate media that they came up with a whole entire campaign about fake news, but it blew up in their face because everyone who, well, probably everyone in this room, understands the fake news is the, is the mainstream media that told us Iraq had these weapons of mass destruction that constantly lie about everything. And right now we're seeing, what? Yeah, that's not true. Okay, let's go back to the program here. <laughs> The, the, where was I? The, oh, yeah. The, they came up with their own fake news, which backfired on them because the people who are the most uh, conscious and uh, critical thinkers recognized that the real fake news was the mainstream media that were telling us things that weren't true. And this is now coming to pass right here with what happened just a few weeks ago when there was a false flag. They found a patsy to pin the, the uh, shooting on. None of the physical evidence matches the story. They kept changing the story. They kept changing the timeline. And everyone in, in the country and the world is seeing what liars they are and that what is being told to you is obviously not the truth. Now, we don't know the whole truth yet because there was obviously, well, there was apparently operation within an operation within an operation so we don't know exactly what happened. Well, one thing we, don't, we do know is that that was, that was not a sole gunman, just like Lee Harvey Oswald was not the sole gunman that killed President Kennedy. And in, and in the, uh, another thing that Trump is allegedly planning to do, which I'm hoping he does, is to release the, the, all the CIA files on the JFK assassination so people will know immediately that the government in the past lied, that it was a whitewash, it was fake news back then, but be back then we didn't have the internet. Now we have the internet. Okay, now there are other countries where this is happening as well. France, the cabal was able to come back and put their banker in uh, ahead of the nationalist uh, Le Pen, so they were successful there. But other places in uh, New Zealand, the, the, yeah, and there was a a non-cabal uh, official being elected. So the, 
uh, what do you call, in South Korea, a woman who was practicing witchcraft was you know, thrown, out, thrown out of office. And so there's a lot of things that are happening in the world. The cabal is coming back to realize they have to do redouble their efforts to try to maintain the control that they used to have, that they used to take for granted. But there's one country that the leader is demonized almost more than anyone except for Trump. And that country, you all understand, is Russia. Now, why do you suppose they demonize Russia? Because Russia is the most powerful country that is not under cabal control. And what people don't understand, or should not necessarily should focus on, is to understand that Russia is not the USSR. The USSR, the Soviet Socialist Republic, was under cabal control. When that blew up, broke up, and they tried looting all the resources of Russia, they had a very strong leader that stepped up, that was Putin, who had his own power base as a former head of the KGB to prevent that from happening, to jail the oligarchs and say, no, you're not going to take over all the resources of my country. So he's doing what's best for Russia, but indirectly, by opposing the cabal, he's doing more to help Americans than most of our recent political leaders. So all these things are happening right now. Now you can understand why Putin is demonized, why, well, they, they accused, uh, they tried to make, appeal to Trump's ego by saying, oh, you're just uh, kissing up to Putin and this and that. When he, during the campaign, he would say things like, why don't we join up with Russia and beat up ISIS and bomb the hell out of them? You would think from a common sense standpoint, that's a brilliant, simple thing. Well, the reason it doesn't, wasn't accepted in the past was because ISIS was a creation of the CIA and the Mossad, and they wanted him there to destabilize uh, Syria. They, no, They're, there's, they have their own problems. Right. There's, there's, that's one reason. There's also another reason of pipelines. The, they didn't want a pipeline that went through Syria. They wanted the pipeline to, to, well, it has to go through Syria. It's convenient to go through Syria. So they wanted someone who was in, in, in their pocket, in the cabal's control. And so that they would then choose to have the pipeline and come from Saudi Arabia instead of from Iran, for example. So, the point I'm making is I'm talking about politics and I'm, I'm only saying because what happens on the higher plane will manifest in the lower plane and these are just the cracks that are in the cabal's control that's preventing them from implementing their agenda, which is an agenda that's harmful to humanity. And so the reason I'm so optimistic is, as I said, those higher planes are cleared now. You're seeing some of the uh, cracks coming here, but you're, you're not seeing a lot of stuff that's going on behind the scenes. They're going to help humanity uh, economically, uh, politically. One of the things that Trump is doing that you've seen him on TV talk about, he talks about human trafficking. One of the ways that the cabal keeps their politicians and leaders under their control is that they have them under, they're all blackmailable because they've indulged in pedophilia and other things that are way worse than even that satanic rituals and things like that that are, again, trying to be covered up. And the, the leaders know about this. That's one of the difficulties of getting it totally uh, handled is because there are factions uh, that are on both left and right that are trying to prevent this from coming out. But the point is that's the weak point of the cabal is their uh, taste for pedophilia and these, these horrible rituals. So the good news is the energy, the entities that are behind them are all gone. Everything's looking better than ever before. Uh, one of the other good signs is you've heard, well, if you're not from Los Angeles and Hollywood, you may not have paid close attention to it, but famous producer Harvey Weinstein is now being outed as uh, a sexual predator. And, well, 
in Hollywood, it was never a secret. He's been doing this for 30 years, and everyone who's in Hollywood knew this, but no one would ever dare to go up against him. And what's even more interesting, that besides the fact that he was outed, is who outed him? The New York Times broke the story. The New York Times spent 30 years trying to cover it up. So we don't know exactly why they decided to break the story. My theory is that they wanted to get out in front of the impending uh, tidal wave of, of revelations that come out when this is just the tip of the iceberg that they're abusing women. He, was a, he also apparently worked with Jeffrey Epstein with, of the Lolita Express who furnished underage children and he had a whole island in the Bahamas to, for the, the elite <clears throat> to partake of. So it's a, I mean, it's a horrible world, but the, when you look at the mainstream news or e even any news, alternate news, and you see all these negative things happening, understand that this is the prophecy, all that is hidden will be revealed. This is not, the, the world has always been corrupt, uh, or as corrupt as it is now, it's just that now it's being exposed. And before you can clean the mess up, you have to expose, know the, know the dirt. And this is the thing that Trump and these other leaders are doing. They're shaking up the system and exposing and shining the light on, on all this horrible actions that are taking place. So now that you're all angry and riled up, we're going to do a meditation, a short one, just to get rid of all this anger. You in particular. <laughs> so this is just going to be a very short meditation. It's going to be a meditation where you get rid of all your anger. So what we're going to do is you're going to just take a few deep breaths at your own natural rhythm. I'm going to try to pump up the energy in the room to help you. And you're going to envision that we're all in a huge circle. And in the center of this circle, is a huge violet flame. And this violet flame will automatically transmute anything you throw into it into pure love. So now while you're getting more and more relaxed, you may feel some of the energy coming into you. This energy is higher vibrations of love. And this is being, with every breath, you're inhaling it into your lungs and you're spreading it through, pumping it from your heart into every capillary, into every cell in your body. Okay, now, I want you to think of all the different people that lied to you, abused you, misled you, betrayed you, cheated you, stole from you, hurt you, deliberately tried to hinder your spiritual development, and now take that anger that you have and just pull it right out of your body and throw it directly into that violet flame. And just keep breathing and just keep throwing away any of that anger into the violet flame. And while you do that, I'm just gonna set this mic down for a second and get rid of any entities that might be bugging anyone in the room. Now while we're still busy unloading our anger, as you think back, there are probably many occasions where you realize you could have done something differently. You could have said something differently. You could have acted differently. You could have responded to something in a much better way. And that's natural to <clears throat> always be able to come up with better responses to problems and situations because you have access to more information, and also you're older and theoretically wiser. 
So always, with the benefit of hindsight, you can come up with better solutions. But the point is, at the time you made these decisions and you took action or didn't take action, you did the best you could with the information that was available and with the understanding you had at that time. So I want you to forgive yourself, cut yourself a break, and just take out any regret you may have, any anger you may have at yourself, and throw that into the fire as well, into the violet flame. And while we're here, let's see if we can also help <clears throat> the entire city of Las Vegas and the world that's been traumatized by this horrible, evil act where 59 or so people were killed. So any anger you may have at this, both the actions of, of these innocent people being killed, being sacrificed, to further a negative agenda. Any anger you may have at the press for lying or the FBI for, mis for misleading you, trying to say it was a single shooter. Any anger whatsoever, go ahead and toss that into the violet flame as well. Okay, that's good. And just envision all that negativity being transmuted by the violet flame. And now having gotten rid of all that anger, just feel yourself growing lighter and lighter. And I'm gonna take the whole room to a higher place Okay, and when you're ready, slowly bring your awareness back to the room. If you want to ground yourself, visualize light coming out of your tailbone and your feet deep into the Earth's crust, connecting deeply with the Earth so that you're in this world, but not of it. And when you're ready, just open your eyes and come back to our 5D event. We went pretty high. Now, usually people don't want to talk except for Samuel right after a meditation like this. <clears throat> so I'll just feed you a little bit of information. Tomorrow at 3.30, uh, we're going to do another meditation. It's going to be much deeper than this one to not only get rid of anger, but also all the sadness that you've harbored that you probably don't even know you have. We'll get rid of sadness, grief, ang anguish, and we'll also fill you with, uh, well, we'll fill you with positive energy, but we'll also take you on a journey to meet your own higher self. So, so that'll be tomorrow at 3.30 in the Zeus B room, the, the smaller room over there. So in the meantime, if anyone would like to well, how, how's everyone feeling? Everyone feeling good? A little bit lighter? Relieved? Anyone want to know how to maintain this light, positive state? So would it be okay for me to tell you? Okay. Well, what I do, I mentioned before, is I clear people out energetically through the process I call higher self-integration. Uh, usually I do this over the phone. I can do some people tomorrow morning if you would like an appointment to do that. On my website, the price is $147. 
and I'm booked through into December now already, uh, every five days a week. But for anyone here today, if you want to sign up for one of those, I'll knock $50 off so you can sign up. And even if you can't do it tomorrow, if you pay me today, you'll lock in that price and you'll, you can schedule an appointment with me via telephone. So that's the best thing that I can offer to you. Short of that, I have a couple of CDs that are infused with the same energy that we are now experiencing right now. Uh, one is energy center clearing that I alluded to where it cleans out your energy centers and it's filled with uh, that positive energy and it's gonna make it easier for you to connect with your higher self. And that comes also with another meditation, the exercise to release limiting beliefs where you create your own private sanctum to attune with God or your higher self. That's one CD. The other one is the merging with your higher self that I did with a Kundalini yoga instructor, uh, Monica Summerfield, who's also been helping people to connect with their higher self. So this particular CD has male and female energy. So it's totally balanced and will take you on a magical journey and you'll clear yourself out and go to a higher world and connect with your higher self. That's another one you can do. Those CDs sell on my website every day for $39.95. You can get them at the show today for $10 off. So if you want that. There's also a short CD, Total Love Immersion, which fills you with absolute, unconditional, infinite, divine love. That's $10. And then I also have two books, Mystic Warrior and Mystic Secrets Revealed. Uh, Mystic Warrior is a novel where the hero has to develop his psychic abilities to first survive and then save the world from a nuclear bomb threat. And that novel won two National Book Awards. Uh, the other one is Mystic Secrets Revealed, which is a series of 53 different lessons on how to uh, improve your life through using these mystic techniques. So uh, David was giving me the sign that we're, we only had five minutes left. So I don't really have time for questions, but I'll be outside if anyone would like to sign up for any of these things or get a book. I'm happy to autograph any of these books. And that concludes our talk for today. Hope to see you. Thank you.